moving from the power of breath now into the power of play. And I've got a beautiful guest here, Sas Tetzlaff. So um, I've encountered her because she has also qualified or is in the process of qualifying as an energy alignment method mentor. And she's also a textile artist and creator. And we work on, as part of our yeah, journey, we work on raising our energetic vibration. And part of that is being creative and working uh, and working to, not really working <laughs> playing like. <laughs> the importance of play you know in our lives and how can we introduce that in, in a more regular more consistent fashion and how can we do that how can we express ourselves creatively so this is the purpose of this talk and I'm so pleased to have her with me and yeah so Sas explain a little bit more about your background so you, you okay. you're commercial background or your corporate background if you have one yeah. or yeah. what you've done with your business when you started yeah so far away okay thank you esther for welcoming me here today and hello everybody as esther said my name is sas and um i'm i've always been an artist from this big and drew on everything drew on the walls drew on books drew on you know nothing was safe in our house so it was inevitable that I would be doing something creative with my life uh, fast forward um, through school and everything yeah I, I followed my passion through school but it was always kind of yeah but what are you going to do with your life and it's like well isn't it obvious and it was only obvious to me um so i've kind of pushed against that my entire life to say no i can have a creative life and um I've always had to find ways to incorporate it into my life and because it is so important to me and that has really paid off because um the other thing that i did from being yay high was i did sewing because I think it just occupied me and, and kept me out of my grandmother's uh, hair a little bit. And fortunately, I managed to combine that in adulthood into a wedding dress design business that I ran for 30 years and I have literally only just retired from. So if that wasn't creative, I don't know what is, but it was very, very technical as well. Um, so I always kept my kind of art practice on the side and and when the kids were little it was just for me just an outlet and a creative thing and obviously when kids are little I didn't do a lot of it but then gradually sort of let that blossom and bloom and it has been called uh, various things it's been called the the vanity project um by various members of the family again I've fought against that but then I Went and did a degree as an adult, and from the back of that degree, I entered um, a, the Society of Designer Craftsmen. I won awards, and you know, just went from strength to strength because I, I held it in my heart that that's what I was going to do. But that's just my story. I'm here today to talk about how the rest of you can incorporate creativity in your life to have all kinds of benefits that I know it's given me. Um, and my kind of creativity, I, I call it play. And I think it's very important to um, understand that it's not about being artistic. And I, I know you're all sort of saying, that, oh, it's easy for her, isn't it? Well, I've just proven it wasn't that easy. But we are all born to be creative. It's just innate in us. And it's the... That word creativity or play, I swap them around. But you can actually swap it for the universe. The universe plays all the time. <laughs> and it's got a great sense of humour. The universe has a great sense of humour. And, and that's what I'm talking about, tapping into that innate creativity in all of us. Um, so, yeah, so that that's what I'm here to talk to today. So I don't know if you want me to ramble or if you have specific questions no, so, for me. Um, so why is it important that we learn to play? It's very important. Why. And that is the big question. And I think the first thing I would say is, isn't it a shame that we have to ask that question at all? Okay. Isn't it? What happened? Why? In our lives, at what point did that become something that we had to validate? You know, when we're children and, you know, that, that, that we're always encouraged, give them games that will um, encourage stimulate their them. hand. Yeah, stimulate them and their hand eye coordination. And it was this and it. And as a, as a tiny human being, it is considered that you will only develop properly if you play. <laughs> 
<laughs> when did that stop? You know, mm -hmm. so basically, I suppose I'm giving you permission to go right back to that and say, well, as a person who is constantly growing, constantly expanding, constantly out there looking for the answers, the answers are within. And it's about that curiosity, that what ifness of, and that's what play is. It's what will happen if I do this mm -hmm. and I do this and I did it. And, and if I poke that, will it fall over? And, and that's how we learn and grow. And it's about applying those principles to, to something in, in your everyday. And it can yeah. permeate out through everything you do, but there are ways of enhancing it and focusing it and doing it consciously. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I heard you talk in another group and you mentioned, you know, why do we always have to have a specific end game to play? Why do we have to feel that we have to have a result of some kind? And it's like learning to be in that process, isn't it? Yeah, creating. it is. That's, that's the thing. And, and yeah. I think that's what puts a lot of people off, that idea of being marked out of 10. Um, yeah. Forget that. Ditch yeah. that completely. That is not what it's about. It's about doing something for the sake of doing it and for the joy of doing it. Um, so so that, that's really what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. yeah. Brilliant. So, uh, so how has play helped you to be more creative? So it is, yeah. have, how, how, how have you taught yourself to lean into it, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's about that. It's about letting go of the marks out of 10. It's about letting go of the end result. And it's about, going within and finding something and and I have some little kind of I hate the word rules but I have some little kind of bullet points of, of the principles of what actually does encourage the best kind of play um, until it becomes second nature the things I recommend is that you do something that involves your hands so it really is get off that screen and, and frankly get out of the gym you know mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because it enables part of your brain, and, and I'm not talking about left brain, right brain, which is we know is not really the way things are set up in your brain. And, um, people did think it used to be left brain, right, but it's, it's actually not. What it is, it's a, a more of a holistic thing. And it's about recognizing that there are certain parts of your brain that do certain things and control certain functions. And when we do things repetitively, i.e. our job or anything else in our day, that we, we go through the motions, we're on autopilot, that is allowing one part of our brain to be in the driving seat. And it's the part of our brain that allows it, itself, it wanders off. And it wanders off into those places where you don't, frankly don't want it to go. It's where the doubts and the self-limitations are literally going round and round and the monkey chatter and that can start to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because that's where your focus is when you're doing something repetitive on autopilot you're you're not consciously doing it and and you we all know how bad that monkey mind is that and because you project into conversations that haven't yet happened that may actually never happen but they get bigger and bigger and you spend more and more of your day in that state of consciousness or unconsciousness. So by doing something that involves using your hands and, and I say and tools as well, even if your hands are the tools, um, you have to pay attention to what you're doing in case you do something wrong with those tools and you might, you know, your brain Selfful. kicks in. Yes, yeah, self <laughs> self um protection you know i'm using a lot of chisels here i'm using a lot of sharp knives here you know so it's like focusing on not chopping my fingers off or poking myself with a needle or you know whatever it is so i'm you know i'm talking about being creative physically creative with your hands where you use ingredients or materials to make something from nothing or whatever those materials or ingredients are again not that worried about the end result it's about the doing and the process and following a step by step thing. And what that does is it, it takes your brain away from the, the monkey chatter into some other part of the brain to give that monkey chatter a rest. Ah, oh, 
Oh. That is that is a sweet thing to do. <laughs> and I know meditation does it and, and everything, but this is just another way. If you're the kind of person that oh, can't really get into meditation or find it doesn't work for you. Bit of a fidget, try, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> me for instance no I do meditate and it's true but this is a kind of meditation because it it accesses those brain waves that we um the vibration in our brain that is more childlike um it's more like the theta brain waves that that we operate in permanently as a child and what that does is it allows access to things like imagination and intuition it, it also connects to your autoimmune system more and, and and a whole host of other things you can go away and google i won't bore you with this morning but that's what it does and it wakes those things up and those things like imagination and intuition are so important in other areas of your life if you flex that thinking things through kind of part of your brain you you might be i, I don't know your car might break down and instead of going into uh it's like ha huh how can that part of your brain kicks in the figuring it out the solution orientated let's go through a process of fixing the car changing the wheel or whatever and that's just a really silly example but it shows how having that part of your brain um, fit and healthy mm. will kick in in any, every other aspect of your life so it even will go back into your business or your job your nine to five whatever it is in a way that that then becomes more creative and more, you know, meaning and fulfilling for you. So again, that monkey chatter switches off. So can you see the cycle that it, it engenders and encourages? And it also connects to the heart because you have to have your heart engaged and do it because you have to put your heart and soul into it. You know, so all these little expressions that you go, oh yeah, that's what that means, you know. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's finding some, and it's playing around, and not, not yeah. understanding some things may not stimulate your curiosity, or and others yeah. that oh, suddenly I feel like oh, there's the heart and soul in it. And it's yeah, excited, yeah. and I feel passionate about something. Yeah, for once. Like, yeah, and and um, I mean, so, so what I'm talking about really is uh, by any other name is hobbies. Yeah. Um, and and people go, oh yeah, but where do I start? Well. One of the best places to start is is kits, little kits, um, you know, even little airfix models. That you can get so many these days. Give it a go. And it play, curiosity, try. That's another word that I think is is another word for play. Try it. How do you know? Oh, try it on the size. Yeah. Oh, yeah, try it on. And, you know, really, I don't want to, you to, to even entertain that little voice in your head that says, Oh, I'm going to be really useless at this, you know. So what? <laughs> you know, it's it's it it feeds into the thing about um. You, know, we've been told for decades now that we lead sedentary lifestyles now, and we're we're just becoming couch potatoes, and we need to go to the gym, and we've all taken it on board, and we've all bought that membership, and bought the kit with the lycra in it and the special bag to carry it all in and I, I i did it myself and i bought a mountain bike and, and all the rest of it and we did it and you don't come out of the gym with something to hold do you mm. nothing tangible but you go in there knowing that you're doing some good for yourself no matter how useless you are on the treadmill or whatever i'm supposed to do this it's, it's so good for me and i, I must do it well, that's the attitude to take into play until it becomes second nature. Because the first time you go in and you're like looking at everybody else and going, oh, my God, they're gorgeous. And, you know, but I've got to be here because it's good for me. So you do. You try. You try the bikes. You try the treadmill. You try this. You try. You find out which machines you like and which you don't. And if you find out you don't hate the gym at all, you, you jump in the pool and you start swimming. So you keep going. You keep trying things, knowing that it's doing you so much good and you're getting so many benefits. And the brain is just another muscle that you, you need to flex and, and keep it fit. Mm. But not the monkey chatter type brain. So how do I keep my brain fit if I don't just sit there and let it monkey chatter? You get into play, you get into kits or you buy a magazine on a certain topic and, 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 I'm, and 
you know, or you you join an online community and see what they're doing, and you look for inspiration. And inspiration is what sparks so many other things. So if you're just sat in your chair thinking about the things that bother you, you're not being inspired to do anything. So go and look for something. You know, cooking, baking is is a perfect thing to do. Even if you say, "Oh, I, I can't be arty farty," to anybody who reads can follow a recipe. You know, even if it's just chili con carne or whatever. You know, <laughs> but it's also about make sure that you you spend money doing it. That's another thing that's really oh, important. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like. <laughs> Hang on a minute. You know, why are you on the treadmill? Not in the gym. I'm back in the treadmill of life, the hamster wheel of life. Why are we there? Why do we put all the hours into our business or our nine to five? I, I don't care if you're an entrepreneur or you're salaried. Or, I don't mind. I don't care. You are still this this human being with all the same trappings that everybody else has got. Why do you get up in the morning and go to work? to earn money oh okay right I understand that so what do you do with that money well uh, uh, I spend it oh what do you spend it on oh I buy big flash cars and I buy a new set of cushions every month for my sofa and I you know I buy new lampshades and and, and I buy new stuff to go to the gym and but when was the last time you spent that money on you and I don't just mean new clothes and jewelry or whatever it is that floats your boat I mean, something where you spend money to enhance that mind, body, soul experience, that integration, because that's what play does. It integrates your mind, body, and soul. Um, so I don't know if, if, if your people know about the three energy centers. Um, you've got your head, and you've got your heart, and you've got your hara, which is like the bit at the bottom. And only if those three are in harmony can you live a really fulfilled life. And so we all, everybody talks about, you know, we need more love and more heart. And, and I, I agree. I totally agree. Oh, and Yahara, that's where we manifest things and where, where we do our, you know, action and we make things happen. But neither of those two can happen without this. This is what, you know, oh, I'm going to take all these action steps and, you know, do this in my business, do this in my life. But your brain is what puts one foot in front of the other to make, to take that aligned action. So you need all three. So this has got to be healthy and it's got to be fit. Well, how do you do that? How do you, how do you give your brain a workout? By playing. Mm -hmm. And we give it that frivolous word, playing. It's a workout for your brain. It's not just play. And we've downgraded it so much through schools and, you know, it's, it's like the, the add-on subject. It's like, have you done your physics homework? Have you done your maths homework? You know, it's like, did you remember to play a bit as well, you know? And, and I think that's the sadness that, that we've forgotten that, that it is part of the integral whole. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a very holistic practice. It is, it? Yeah. definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Oh, brilliant, yeah. yeah. So um, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> you've just explained all that questions now about play in our energy centres. <laughs> so what is the spiritual impact of playing? So is there a spiritual dimension? Absolutely, there is a spiritual dimension there. And it's... <sighs> It's it's a it's a direct line to the universe if you're playing. I'm sorry, it is that, you know, no finger dialing, it's like a direct line to the spiritual. The spiritual loves you and you know that that inner thing inside you is it wants you to be happy. And that is basically why we're here. Yeah, we're doing the job and we're doing the family and we're doing the relationships, but not take it right down. What does it go right down to? It goes right down to being happy and to being full of love and full of joy. Nobody's seeing the connection yet between love, joy, happiness and play. 
and uh, because those are words that that go hand in hand with you know love joy happiness and and you know fun they are it's just as important so it, it's it's part of the ho the whole practice and and it's it's the thing where if you're doing something just for the joy of it so again i'm with leaving out that marking out of 10 thing I, you know please leave that at the door if you're just immersing yourself in something for fun that is the one of the greatest connections to spirit that you can have you're, you're forgetting about the humdrum. You're forgetting about the pressures. You're forgetting about the arguments. You're, you're in that zone of connection. And, and it is, it's very much a heart-centered thing as well. And, and, you know, it's the three energy centers. And that's how you connect to spirit. And when you are doing something just for the joy of it, your spirit is, is rejoicing in that. Mm. It's, it's singing and it's, it's actually saying hallelujah you know it's like about <laughs> yeah, yeah. time oh, oh it is that the echo isn't it because the universe yeah. is kind of creative all the time and then we are in that same creative energy aren't we and we're yeah. reflecting back yeah. yeah yeah so it's it's not just about being creative in your relationships and your you, you know it's and and it, it can feed into all of those things because if you know how to be in that just for the sake of it joy zone it, it's infectious and it spreads and and it gets fitter that part of you gets fitter yeah because um and then so the spillover effects when you're in that higher energetic state yeah. joy and expressiveness and yeah. yeah how does that impact other people around us so. oh it's infectious it is literally infectious mm. uh, what can i say and and people sort of see you um because you don't just raise your vibration for the duration of, of what it is you're doing. And, and, and I don't mind what it is you do. Um, it, it raises you and keeps you there. And the, and the more you do it and the more you carve out that time and, and spend that money on the tools and the equipment and the ingredients, you, you, you up level and you're there and then you're there and you're there and you're there and you're there and you're there. And then before long, you do actually come to appreciate what it's doing for you. And then people see that and they're like, oh, God, why are they doing over there? You know, like, why are they having so much fun? And I'm still over here doing my spreadsheet. You know, it's like, <laughs> what am I doing wrong here? It's like, you know, so it is, it's, 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 it's so important to carve that time out and include other people in what you mm. do. Join communities. And I know at the moment we can't do things, but when we get back to normal um classes join classes you know night class or adult air class or whatever or i've done everything uh, as a six-week class you know there how many blocks of six weeks do we have in our life <laughs> anybody out there that's got a calculator you you add a a, a total life of four score year, you know, years and ten how many blocks of six weeks is it going to kill you to go and do a six-week class on stained glass, woodwork, plumbing? I don't know, plumbing even. I suppose you can be creative with plumbing. Something, anything. Uh, cooking curries, grinding your own spices, um, anything. As long mm -hmm. as there is you know, a process and that you're using tools of some sort, um, because that's the, the, the hand-eye coordination thing is, is the important. That's the hook. So, I mean, things like... Um, the, the little mindful coloring books are great, but then it's done for you. You're just filling in the, the, the thing. It's it, Move on. Uh, little puzzle books that people do with the number things, Sudoku or whatever it's called. Uh, no, it, your mind can still wander when you're doing those things and, you, and you're only operating the, the mathematical side of it. It's that hand-eye coordination and the fact that your fingers have to be doing something that you haven't done before. That's the other thing. I'd try something completely new or something that you did years ago that you really quite liked and would like to get back into. I am giving you permission to go and do it. It's, so if, if someone says, well, yeah, Sass said I had to do it. It's like, uh, <laughs> I've, been, I've been told. <laughs> but actually, yeah. today, with you know, with our technology, with uh, everything virtual now, with the 
pushed COVID has pushed us in this way yeah. <laughs> to become more online. But it's great because there's so many um, new entrepreneurs now offering yeah. courses in using your yeah. hands. So yeah. it's, there's Very important. a plethora of people out there. Yeah. So, you know, why if not now, when? <laughs> there is no excuse, is there? Yeah. There is no excuse. And you say, oh, well, I can't go and buy the kit. You can buy the kit online. You can buy the, the ingredients and everything will come to your door. It's so like, that's, that's how we live nowadays, you know. Yeah. You think of it, somebody will deliver it to you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's interesting, your take on it, because I, I always thought of being creative means also um, writing or, um, or actually doing crosswords sometimes <laughs> to keep your mind agile <laughs> and i know my grandmother my maternal grandmother you did a lot of crosswords and i think that's why she didn't succumb to alzheimer's or anything like that yeah. she kept her mind agile but i yeah. think what you're saying is is more than that is using eye coordination using because we can still get stuck in a in a, a rut that way as well yeah. using one yeah. part of our brain only yeah yeah and it is that thing about do something different different yeah. even if you do find the, the thing that you really really love doing say say for instance it's knitting mm -hmm. and so you pick up the the, the i was gonna say sticks oh if there's any knitters out there they're gonna what are they needles <laughs> knitting, <laughs> knitting sticks you can tell i'm not i'm a textile artist people say oh did it, do you do knitting as i'm like no and they're like well surely it's like no it's not the same so you pick up the knitting sticks okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> and, and you know so you get proficient at that but don't yeah. just knit jumpers <laughs> try something else try different yarns da, da, da. keep pushing it keep asking the how and the why and the curiosity don't get safe with it yeah that, that's so what i'm it saying is, yeah it's always sort of that expanding us pushing yeah. us a little bit further yeah. isn't it stretching yeah. that muscle yeah of creativity yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah who knows where it'll take you really yeah. who knows yeah. <laughs> brilliant thank you so much sas you're how very can people welcome people so have you, are you working on something at the moment, just a project? I, I, at the moment, I'm working on my house. I've literally, two, two months ago, downsized massively, given up my wedding dress business, my massive studio and everything. I've moved into a, a gorgeous little um, house. But um, So that's my project at the moment. But I, um, I am going to be, when I do my I've done my accreditation when I find out that I am um, a qualified EAM in uh, mentor I will be rolling out some programs of integrating play curiosity fun through EAM so it's about you know releasing those blocks as well but that the you know my I will always have that in an in agenda of getting people to play you know <laughs> okay we got rid of all that rubbish i was going to say a naughty word there but i won't um <laughs> so how are we going to play you know and i will always be bringing it round to play so um yeah um i've got a website that is just about my textile art so if anyone's just curious about um having a look to see how much fun i actually have in my practice go and have a mm -hmm. look um it's literally satstetslove.com all lowercase okay. you know, not, not, yeah yeah no. Nothing, nothing complicated about it so um and follow me on social I'm, I'm around on social as well as a textile artist and the society of design and crafts and things but i am going to be rolling out some programs soon yeah yeah that's exciting i bet you can't wait <laughs> yeah i know i'm like yeah <laughs> being the perpetual creator and yeah. want to be moving into back into the creative I just I just realized at one point in my life that there was an awful lot of fun to be had out there. And if I could con everybody else into thinking I was actually working, <laughs> then, <laughs> then it's yeah. like, you know, that's my that's my little secret, you know. Well, it's the new paradigm, isn't it? You can yeah. actually have a living doing what you love. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you, you totally know. believe in it, there's no obstacle. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's possible. Brilliant yeah thank you very much oh it's a pleasure it's a lovely oh, to be here yeah it's been gorgeous having your wonderful <laughs> energy thank in you. this uh, group it's fantastic and uh thank you for your time today and for My your pleasure. pearls of wisdom thank you okay thank you bye bye